Okay, so we're going to prove that if a trapezoid is isosceles, then each pair of base angles are congruent. So the base angles are, um, so a pair of base angles is angle B would be congruent to angle C, and angle A would be congruent to angle D. So that's what we're trying to prove. We're trying to prove that B is congruent to C, and angle A is congruent to angle D. Okay, so let's go ahead and start this proof. Okay, so we know A, B, C, D is an isosceles trapezoid. Okay, so this implies that, um, so if it's a trapezoid, that means that the bases are parallel, right? So this implies that BC is parallel to AD. All right, so that's the first thing. But since it's an isosceles trapezoid, we know that the legs are congruent, right? So, and we know that AB is congruent to CD. So let's go ahead and draw little marks here. All right, so the next thing we're going to do is we're gonna draw altitudes. Uh, we're going to draw altitudes uh, B, E, and C, F. Okay, so we'll draw this altitude here. We'll call that B, E. And then draw this altitude here and call that CF. All right. So um, we know, so this implies that these two angles are 90 degrees, right? Um, I guess the measure of angle BEF plus, oh, is equal to 90 90, which is equal to the measure of angle CFE, right? And there's a theorem that tells us if there's two lines that are cut by a transversal, where the sum of those consecutive angles on the same side of the transversal is 180, then the two lines must be parallel. So we know that the measure of angle BEF plus the measure of angle CF E is equal to 180 implies, so this implies that BE is parallel to CF. All right. Now I have, so remember I had um, A, I had that BC was parallel to AD. So that surely means that BC is parallel to EF, and I have BE parallel to CF. So that means BCFE is a parallelogram because opposite sides are parallel. So I have that uh, BC is parallel to EF, and uh, BE is parallel to CF implies that, what was it again? BCFE, uh, BCFE is a parallelogram. And the thing about parallelograms is opposite sides are equal and opposite angles are equal. So that means that um, more imp the most important thing, BE is congruent to CF. So this implies that BE is congruent to CF. We also know that this angle is congruent to that angle, so CBE, um, angle CBE is congruent to, so CBE is congruent to CFE. Well, I guess I'll just put um, the measure is equal to 90, right? So let me do that. The measure of angle CBE is equal to 90, which is equal to the measure of angle um, CFE, right? And then finally, um, angle, the measure of angle BEF is equal to 90, which is equal to, to 90, which is equal to BCF, right? 
Okay. So now let me put this in here. This is congruent to this. Now, as you can see, I'm going to look at triangle ABE and DCF, right? So these two triangles are congruent by hypotenuse leg, right? Since they're both right triangles and hypotenuse is congruent to hypotenuse, corresponding leg congruent to corresponding leg. So these two triangles are congruent. So um, AB congruent to CD. For the hypotenuses, we have BE congruent to CF. And we have uh, angle BEA, so the measure of angle BEA is equal to 90, which is equal to BEA um, CFD, right? The measure of angle CFD. So these three things together imply by hypotenuse leg that triangle um, ABE is congruent to triangle um, DCF, right? So DCF. And if these two angles are congruent, oh, also I forgot to put the 90s here. All right. So if these two triangles are congruent, that means angle A is congruent to angle D. So this pair of base angles are congruent, right? So this implies that angle A is congruent to angle D. And um, I know that this angle is congruent to this angle. So angle ABE and Angle ABE is congruent to angle um, DCF. And notice, so the measure of angle B, so B is this entire thing, right? Do you agree that the measure of angle B is angle ABE plus 90? is equal to the measure of angle ABE plus 90. And if ABE is congruent to DCF, then ABE plus 90 is the same thing as the measure of angle DCF plus 90. But DCF plus 90 is angle C, it's all of angle C. So that equals the measure of angle C. So I have the measure of angle B is equal to the measure of angle C, so that means angle B is congruent to angle C. So we showed that this pair of base angles are congruent, right? That angle A is congruent to angle D, and we showed that this pair of base angles, angle B and angle C are congruent. So we proved what we set out to do.